Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. We are going to prove a really nice formula today. It's just a special case, actually, of Gauss multiplication formula. We are going to prove Legendre's duplication formula today. And it's pretty easy, actually, once you have the prerequisites. And I'm not really certain if I have introduced another definition of a certain function already. So we are going to go through the whole process, okay? Bear with me here. At first, I would like to give some motivation. We are going to have a factor of gamma of 2 times z right here, okay? What is gamma of 2 times z? Well, it's nothing but gamma of z plus z. And you know, we have introduced a special, 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 really useful function before that allows us to express it using the addition of arguments of the gamma function. It's a beta function, okay? So if we take a look at the beta function of z comma z, it's going to provide us with, okay, gamma of z squared in this case over gamma of two times z in this case. Now, we are only going to take a look at this thing right here, right now, because, yeah, um, we can manipulate this into something really nice, okay? Such that we can actually express it like this up here. So let us take a look at beta of z comma z. That was just the motivation where this gamma of two times z is actually going to come from. Okay, beta of z comma z is nothing but the integral from zero to one in this case of, um, yeah, we're going to get a t to the z minus one power times 1 minus t to the z minus 1 power dt in this case. I'm terribly sorry, sometimes I have to think about the stuff I do right here. <laughs> like I said, I, I'm not certain if I already have introduced the other definition of the beta function up until now, except for this one right here. That's why we are going to introduce a certain substitution that is going to make our life pretty easy. Okay, so we are going to introduce a trigonometric substitution, namely let our t be equal to the sine squared of, um, I don't know, phi for example. Meaning if we differentiate that, we are going to get um, that dt is nothing but, okay, sine differentiate is going to give us the cosine. So we have to use the product rule. We are going to have this factor two times. So two times the sine of phi cosine of phi d phi. Okay, we are defining the system of mathematics yet again. We can plug this chunk into here. We are going to get an integral running from, okay, when is the sine squared going to be equal to zero? Well, when sine is going to be equal to zero, we are going to take the principal branch right here. And when is our sine squared going to be equal to one? So we can take the root on both sides, basically in the absolute value of this thing. And well, if our sine of pi over two is going to result in one, that's when we have our real value. So pi over two is up here. Okay, just some basic substitution. You can also take the square root and then the inverse uh, sine on both sides. We're going to get the sine of z minus one and then the whole thing squared. So giving us two times z minus two, one minus the sine squared, okay, this is already really good. Also, I forgot the phi right here, I'm terribly sorry, to the z minus one of power. And then our dt is nothing but this right here. So two times um, sine of phi, cosine of phi, d phi. We know what one minus sine squared is by the fundamental theorem of trigonometry. <laughs> We're going to get the cosine squared right here. Overall, this is going to give us the cosine of the same exponent that we have right here. So cosine of two times z minus two of phi, meaning we can actually get rid of one sine and one cosine part right here because this negative two is the same as one over cosine squared. So this is going to result in an integral from zero to pi over two of, okay, we are going to get the sine of phi, also we have two times this thing. I'm going to put it right here, okay? Two times the sine of phi to the two set minus two power. Then we are going to have the cosine to the two set minus two power of phi 
first power, not tooth power, I'm terribly sorry because we got rid of one of those factors, d phi. Now, all that's really left to do is to actually turn this into something nice. So, so if you take a look at this thing that we have right here actually, okay? Two times the sine of phi, cosine of phi is actually just the sine of two times phi. Okay, this is the double angle formula. Meaning, if we could just bring this two to the inside, when we factor out basically all of those exponents, we could actually get our double angle formula and that would be quite easy to integrate actually. So, how can we do this? Well, two is nothing but two to the first power. But where we want to get it is two to the z to the 2 z minus 1 power. Goodness, that's a mouthful right here. How can we get there? Well, why not multiply this by a 1, but a 1 is nothing but 2 to the 2 z minus 2 power over 2 to the 2 z minus 2 power. <sighs> okay, I hope you could follow everything I said. Meaning, what we are going to get is 2 to the 2 minus 2z power, going to bring it to the outside using the linearity of the integral, pi over 2. And then this thing right here is going to have the same exponent actually. Meaning we are going to have big parentheses 2 times the sine of phi, cosine of phi, to the 2z minus 1 power, d phi. Like I said, this thing right here is going to evaluate to the sine of 2 times phi leaving us with 2 to the 2 minus 2 z power integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the sine of 2 times phi d phi but 2 to the 2 z minus 1 power. Okay, maybe that was a lot of stuff you had to take into account here but um, it's not too hard actually, so it's pretty easy. Now we can work with this even further. So, when using the better function, you, have, you, you actually have to do a lot of tricks right here, so let, uh, a lot of um, dark math and magic. But what I would like to do is to make this argument in here actually like a regular argument. So just like we have with the, um, with the beta function right here that, that we have a phi in here and instead of a 2 phi, okay? Meaning um, let 2 phi be equal to u for example and meaning 2d phi is nothing but du, okay? We actually have a 2 here because this is this 2 is nothing but 1 plus 1, okay? So we can actually track this to the inside and 2 times d phi is nothing but du then here, okay? So this is 2 to the 1 minus 2z power integral from, okay, if we plug 0 into here, this is going to give us 0 once again. If we plug pi over 2 into here, then this is going to give us pi, okay? I hope you agree that we are going to get pi right here. Also, what else do we have? We are going to have the sine to the z minus 1 power of u and then du. Now, how can we continue here? I mean, we would like to get back to the better function uh, once again, but the thing is, our better function requires us to have pi over 2 as the upper bound. So why not break this integral up under the condition that it exists? into an integral from 0 to pi over 2 plus an integral from pi over 2 to pi. Okay, we, we can break it up like this. So that's just simple analysis right here. If we take a look at the integral as just simple area. So 2 to the 1 minus 2 z power times an integral from 0 to pi over 2 sine to the 2 z minus 1 power of u du, I'm going to put big brackets right here, plus integral from pi over 2 to pi of the same thing right here, sine to the 2z minus 1 power of u du. Oh, there's a lot of thinking I have to do here, and that's even the really simple one. So this right here is pretty trivial, actually. So that's there's nothing much to see here, actually. We would like to get back to the better function yet again. 
meaning what we can do we can actually introduce substitution for example let t minus one half be equal to uh, t plus one half be equal to u okay so we want to get back to zero and pi over two right here and, and that one half pi over two so right here we want to introduce the substitution let u minus pi over two be equal to t for example okay meaning we are going to get that du is nothing but dt also what we are going to get is the sign of t plus one uh, pi, pi over two why am i keep saying one half our sine wave in a normal case looks like this right here okay but now we would like to shift this thing pi over two units to the left okay we have a negative sign of pi over two meaning this is actually going to result in our cosine wave okay after doing the substitution and some graphing analysis here i would say we actually end up with an integral from zero to pi over two of nothing but our cosine to the two z minus one power Okay, I hope you could follow everything I said now. There was a lot of input right here. I'm going to erase this. We are going to get, okay, two to the one minus two set power, integral from zero to pi over two of sine to the two set minus one power of u du plus integral from zero to pi over two of the cosine two set minus one of u du. <laughs> okay, okay. We are close to being done actually. So what else is there actually missing? So we want to get back to the beta function. And you see our beta function, we have introduced the proper substitution before, is equal to this thing right here okay this right here is our beta function this is one of the other definitions of the beta function like i said i don't know if i have derived it before meaning we can actually get to our beta function if we would have a cosine wave in here with a certain argument we kind of have we have sine times one one is nothing but cosine to the zero of power how can we actually manipulate zero to be of the form two times a i would say minus one where zero is nothing but one minus one okay if you have an apple and you take it away you don't have any apple okay but what is one one is nothing but two times one half minus one meaning this integrand right here is actually the sine to the two z minus one power times the cosine two times one half minus one power and i want you guys to remember a different fact our beta function is actually symmetric beta of x comma y is the same as beta of y comma x meaning we could actually interchange those arguments up here so we could have the sine of phi to the two times x minus one power and your cosine to the two times y minus one power and we could interchange the x and y and it wouldn't change anything meaning this integral and this integral is actually going to be equal they are both one half times the better function it's one half because don't forget we need the two right here for it to be the better function overall okay that's a lot of input i agree two to the one minus two set power then we have one half times the beta function of beta function of what z comma one half okay this is what we have plus I'm going to put it here one half times the beta function of z comma one half this overall just makes the beta function of z comma one half so this is two to the one minus two set power beta of z comma one half beta of z comma one half we know what the beta function is beta function is defined like this like here kind of kind of okay so this is two to the one minus two z power and then we are going to have gamma of z gamma of one half over gamma of z plus one half 
I'm running a bit out of space right here. Okay, but I, I'm, I'm going to continue this video for a second. Let me erase just a little bit. Okay, give me a second. So, now we have this chunk right here. Okay, and we don't want to forget what this was equal to. Beta of z, z. Meaning, we had gamma of z squared over gamma of 2 times z. This was our initial definition. It's nothing but 2 to the um, 1 minus 2z times this chunk that we have right here. Gamma of z gamma of 1 half over gamma of z plus 1 half. How is this any useful now? Well, our gamma function is never going to be equal to zero, meaning there was gamma squared, not gamma of z squared. We can actually get rid of one of those gamma functions. Okay, coolio. Now we are basically at our Legendre's duplication formula. All that's really missing is the factor of square root of pi. So we can rearrange stuff and then basically add it. How can we get to square root of pi? Well, our gamma of one half is nothing but square root of pi, actually. Um, is there a quick way I could actually prove this? Um, did I introduce the Euler reflection formula already? Um, let's try to make a quick proof right here. So if we have gamma of one half times gamma of one minus one half, this is going to give us pi over the sine of pi times z, where z is one half, so pi over two. Sine of pi over two is nothing but one, so this cancels out. One minus one half is nothing but one half, meaning we are going to get gamma squared of one half being equal to pi. We can take the square root on both sides, meaning that gamma of one half is nothing but, it's defined to be positive in the positive real, strictly positive, so positive branch, square root of pi. Yeah, this is where it comes from. So this right here is probably the easiest proof to show that the Gaussian integral, the, the Gaussian integral actually goes to square root of pi. So et voila, that's a one-liner if you have a long one line. Meaning if we rearrange stuff, we are going to get multiplying this on both sides, gamma of z plus one half times the gamma of z is nothing but. We are going to multiply both sides by gamma of 2 times z, so we are going to get 2 to the 1 minus 2z power. Square root of pi, gamma of 2 times z. And this should be it, right? Yeah, cool. Haha, <laughs> coolio. Um, <laughs> this took way longer than I expected it to take. So um, I was thinking this is going to be a 5 minute video, but yeah, I was wrong on this one, but well, I, I hope you did enjoy this video. It's pretty quite a cool formula and the generalization of this thing is an absolute bitch. If you don't use Stirling's approximation, then it's going to be absolutely horrible and I'm going to make a video on that. So do not worry my sons and daughters. If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, recommend channel. If you, like, if you want to support channel a bit more, better see great and also support channel on Patreon. And I want to next video have a flammable day. I bid you all farewell. Ciao.